Till now, we have discussed different types of habitats. In those, we have seen about pond habitat, which comes under aquatic habitats. Now, let us discuss about different types of habitats, which comes on land. And we call those habitats as terrestrial habitats. In terrestrial habitats, the first habitat is tree as a habitat. Tree. We may see different types of trees in our surroundings. As you know that we have different varieties of trees in our surroundings. If you observe a tree, there are different types of organisms which are living on a tree. If you see here the honeybees, the crows, parrots, squirrels, monkeys, snakes, earthworms, etc. These are the different types of organisms which are living on the tree and these organisms will live on different places on the tree. If you see different places on the tree, the tree can be divided into three different places that is branches and leaves of tree, trunk of the tree and root and litter zone of the tree. When if you classify or divide the organisms based on the places on the tree, the bees, wasps, moths, squirrels, blue tits, hawks, monkeys, etc. comes on the branches or they stay on the branches and leaves of the tree, whereas the insects and different larvae stay on the trunk of the tree and even we can see different plants which are growing on the trunk of the tree which gives a green velvety appearance. And if you see the root and litter zone that is under the soil, we can see different types of bacteria, earthworms, wood lice and also fungi. So, these are the different types of organisms which are living on the different places on the tree. Next. So, if you see here, when we make a column of different places or different places on the tree, for example, on the trunk. So, what are the organisms which are present on the trunk between the branches? What are the organisms which are present between the branches and on or within the leaves? So, what are the organisms which are present on the leaf or within the leaf? So, we can classify them and we can give examples in this way. So, the trees are the major habitats of different types of living organisms on the earth, but unfortunately the man is encroaching this habitat. What is meant by encroaching the habitat? The man is destroying the trees or cutting down the forest for his commercial development. So, when a tree is being cut down, all the birds, the build their nests on the tree, all the birds may fall in danger and the different types of organisms like monkeys, squirrels and different organisms which are living on the tree, they may fall in danger because due to the destruction of the habitat. Next, house as a habitat. So, house is a place where we get protection from cold, heat and shelter. So, we get shelter from our house and we get protection from different environmental conditions. So, if you see the house as a habitat, house is a place where different organisms live, human beings live, pet animals and domestic animals live and also different types of plants are grown in the house. If you see here, there are different indoor plants which are grown inside the house and a climber called a money plant which can also be grown inside the house. Whereas, different pet animals like rabbit, cats, ducks or birds, parrots, dogs, birds, fishes and different types of birds also grown in the houses. So, house is not only a place for human beings, but also a place for plants and also different domestic animals. So, so, when we grow different domestic animals inside our house, a proper care and management should also be given to the organisms or the animals which are 
grown inside the houses. For example, cows and buffaloes. Cows and buffaloes, we rear these animals for milk. So, when we, when we take milk from cows and buffaloes, it is our minimum responsibility to provide a good shelter for cows and buffaloes, a food and fodder for cows and buffaloes and also proper water and also proper management and care should be supplied for the cows and buffaloes in order to avoid the diseases spread by different microorganisms. And concern towards the pest. So, as we are growing different domestic animals in our houses, it is our minimum responsibility to show the concern towards the pest. As we show our concern towards the different pest which, which we grow in our houses, they are more affectionate towards us. For example, you have seen a dog which is growing in your house. A dog licks your feet, a dog wags its tail, a dog sits beside you and a dog walks with you. So, this is an affection which a dog shows towards you. So, in order to get this affection from the domestic animals, as plants and animals have right to live in this world along with human beings, we should be concerned towards the pets, animals and plants. Orchids. So, this is the next habitat, a beautiful and wonderful habitat which we generally see when we go uh, in trains or buses. Like orchards are the places where different fruits are grown or same type of plants are grown in a particular area. For example, if you see this, this is an orchard of citrus fruits, this is an orchard of apple fruits, this is an orchard of banana trees. Here only the citrus plants are grown, here only the apple trees are grown and here only the banana plants are grown. But as only these different types of plants are grown here, as there are large trees present here, these trees will become shelter for many different types of organisms and the smaller plants which are growing on the ground. So, these are the different terrestrial habitats which we have seen. So, aquatic terrestrial habitats are the habitats which grow on the land, whereas aquatic habitats are the habitats which grow in the water. It may be on the surface of water or inside the water. So, when we compare the organisms like plants which are growing on the land and on the water like for example, the terrestrial plants and the aquatic plants, the stem of terrestrial plant. What is the difference between the stem of terrestrial plant and the stem of aquatic plant? And what is the difference between leaves, roots and other parts which are present in terrestrial plants and also the aquatic plants? In this way, we can compare the organisms which are growing in terrestrial habitats and also the aquatic habitats and their modifications which suit to the particular environments. These are the next type of habitat is desert habitat. Deserts are the places, deserts are the places where the temperature is very high, temperature is high dry conditions are seen and less water availability. So, these are the three major conditions of desert habitats. So, the organisms which are living in the desert habitats are suitable to those particular conditions prevailing in the deserts. Like for example, the plants which are growing in the deserts like acacia, aloe vera, cactus, etc. These are the different plants which are growing in the deserts. These plants do not have leaves. So, as these plants do not have leaves, the stem is modified to take a process of photosynthesis. And these plants, as there is absence of leaves, there is no chance of evaporation of water through transpiration. And the animals which are living in the deserts, 
these animals <coughs> take less amount of water and also excrete less waste materials and they have certain adaptations to store water in their bodies. <coughs> right. So, a good habitat is responsible for good life. For example, there is a breakage of a door in our house. Can we accept the breakage of door in our house? No, we feel it as disturbed condition, disturbed condition. <coughs> We feel disturbed when our door is broken in our house. Similarly, when the habitats are being destroyed by the human beings, all the animals which are living in those particular habitats will get disturbed, their life also get disturbed and that dist results in the death of different organisms which are present in different habitats. For example, if you see here, we are dumping the waste completely into the water we are dumping the industrial waste into the water. So, when these industrial waste which consists of chemicals is dumped into the water, the aquatic organisms which are living in this water will get suffocated without respiration and finally, it results in the death of the organisms. Similarly, we are dumping the solid waste onto the land. So, when a solid waste is dumped onto the land, the organisms which are living in this particular environment due to the pollution by this solid waste, the organisms which are present here may die due to the pollution which is caused by dumping the solid waste. So, it is our minimum responsibility to keep our habitats clean, so that the habitats or the organisms which are present in that particular situations or habitats may live without any bad effects. So, it is our minimum responsibility as all the organisms, all the plants and animals which are living in this environment, plants and animals are interdependent on each other. Do not we depend on plants? Yes, we depend on plants. Similarly, the plants depend on animals. We depend on plants for oxygen and food material, whereas the animals, the plants depend on animals for carbon dioxide for their respiration. So, both the plants and animals are interdependent on each other. So, let us join our hands to develop the interdependence on plants and animals and to minimize the destruction of the habitats like aquatic habitats and terrestrial habitats by avoiding the dumping of waste into the aquatic and terrestrial habitats and avoiding deforestation. For example, this is there is an example there is a lake called Kolleru and Pullikats in Andhra Pradesh where the different types of birds called Siberian cranes like or pelican birds they come from Russia. <coughs> All along the Russia they come to India for their survival in the month of October. So, these birds they fly all along the Russia and come to the Kolyaru lake and also the Pulikat lake for their survival. They reproduce in those particular areas in the particular month depending upon the climatic conditions provided in that particular area and finally, after the re reproduction they migrate again to their original places. But due to the development of aquaculture in these particular ponds, the habitat of this particular ponds is completely destroyed, which also destroys the life of the migratory birds. So, this is an example of a bird which co comes to the Karnul district. The name of the bird is Battameka Pitta. This is a bird which comes to the Karnul district all along the way from different countries to suit the environmental conditions for its reproduction. This is a fish called Pulasa which lives in seas and oceans, oceans and seas. This is the world's most tastiest fish which is present in the sea water or the ocean water. But the Pulasa fish comes to the river 
or migrates to the river for its survival. For its survival, it migrates to the river and it even again migrates to the oceans and seas for laying eggs. So, for their reproduction, it migrates to the oceans and seas for laying eggs and after reproduction, it comes back to the rivers for its survival because this polusa fish lives in fresh water. The most suitable conditions for the polusa fish is fresh water as the seas and oceans have a very high tidal appearances. The for laying eggs, it is a suitable condition. So, the polusa fish migrates to the seas and oceans for laying eggs and come back to the river for their survival that is freshwater habitat. And so, these are the turtles which come from West Bengal to Vishakapatnam to suit the particular environmental conditions. So, so, these are the different birds or the animals which migrate from different places of the world. These are called migratory animals. These migratory animals, they travel from different places of the world to our country for the development of their penguins which provides the suitable conditions for their development. So, it is our minimum responsibility to maintain the habitats clean and neat without destroying the habitats for our own commercial development. See, think how an unharmed habitat leads to a better life for us. So, save habitats, save life.